I was in Baghdad, and the, the picture will never disappear from my mind. Tank and bombing and dead bodies. I can't forget that image. Mortar and machine gun exchanges were particularly intense around the suburb of Dobrinia next to the airport. It was scary. We did not have a time for play because when you go outside to play, you hear sirens and you know something gonna happen. You look where you're gonna hide. <laughs> We have to kill them. We have to kill them. So when the war started in my country, people was running as a group in the forest. Just go to the forest because people they think if you go to the road, the army they're gonna join us and kill us. You can think stop by now and like, what if we don't see again each other? <laughs> you know? And my mom said, pray, and he, she even said goodbye to us, you know? They said, Coach, whatever you do, don't tell our parents that we hang out together, talk. And they explained to me that one was Christian and one was Muslim. And if they were at home, they would be expected to kill each other. Coming to the U.S., I was scared because, like, the food was very different for, to me, and then I had no friend at first because I couldn't speak English, and then I couldn't, if I couldn't speak English, then I couldn't communicate with the other people. I didn't know what to do. Like, where's my mom? I say all the time. My dad. I was crying, and it was so difficult. Personally, from the time I've been born, I've been spoiled with opportunity after opportunity. And these kids come from everywhere, come from the worst backgrounds, come from things that we would never even know, imagine. We can never imagine. We never know. They go on out there, and they come, and they are just like everyone else. Hello everyone, my name is Mike Stevenson. I'm the principal at Warren Central High School in Bowling Green, Kentucky, and these are several of our students surrounding me right now. And we just want to come on and be very, very clear to any audience that may be watching this documentary. We want to be very clear about the purpose. The purpose of this documentary is to say when groups of people, regardless of diversity, regardless of color or age or faith or fashion or any of those things, when we choose to be good for each other, with each other, we can be as good as we choose to be. We believe that's a message that the whole planet is starving for. We believe that despite our differences, we can choose to be good to each other instead of being unkind to each other. We don't have to hurt each other with words or emotions or violence or any of those things. And we just want you to know at Warren Central High School, we have a lot of people committed to that idea and to that notion, and we live it out daily. The purpose of this documentary is to let the world know that there are many human beings who go through things and suffer through things that many of us are unaware of. Things that would just turn you inside out, that our children go through, that their families go through. And here's what I would want you to know as a message from us at Warren Central High School. None of us chose to be who we are. 
None of us picked our parents. None of us picked the country we were born into. None of us picked any of those things. We just are the product of other people and we didn't have a choice in that. However, in navigating life, we do have some choices. We can choose to realize, even though we, we may come from many different backgrounds, we absolutely can be as good with each other as we choose to. We hope you enjoy this documentary. We hope you learn from this documentary. And, and listen to me. I hope we, as part of the human race, can transfer the message of this documentary into our daily lives. When we choose to listen to these things, embrace these things, it, it will make us all better as a group of people. My number one purpose is that this documentary helps our school family at Warren Central High School. If this message helps other people in, within our community or our state, our nation, or somewhere on the other side of the planet, we hope that through our actions in making this documentary that people can be better for each other. They can be more kind to each other. From many, we are one. Yes. Is Nashville is about an hour away. Good. Number nine. Then I can remember in the in the late nineties, I would score. I worked for the the ESL director, and I would score all of the language proficiency tests for the district. And it took me about two two hours. Then <laughs> I would type up all their names and their results, and we'd send off a report. It was a, about a half day's work. Um, in 2007, we started, we joined the WIDA consortium, which is a large consortium of states that have uh, similar uh, language proficiency standards. And we had 650 kids that took that first test. And then this year, we're testing um, 2,058 kids. So, it, you know, it's an increase, of, we're approaching 200%. They are two separate schools, technically and on paper. Um, but to us, to me, uh, and to the teachers, we don't look at it that way. It's, it's still us. Warren Central High School and Geo International High School, located in Bowling Green, Kentucky, are two unique high schools in one with worldwide connections. Worldwide because, along with native-born Americans, there are students from over 40 nations with more than 50 languages spoken. This unusual combination presents a diversity unlike anywhere else. Bowling Green is a hub for immigration in the United States. Large numbers have immigrated here from places like Latin America, Burma, Bosnia, the Middle East, and Africa. The list goes on and on. To understand the dynamics of the many cultures represented here that have synergized into one, we must go back to the roots of where they came from. In 1948, Burma, also known as Myanmar, received independence from Great Britain. Soon, conflict erupted between Burma and small independent states such as the Kermeni. Over time, civil war escalated, and in the early 1990s, many Kermeni people fled the region and crossed the border into western Thailand to escape the genocide being imposed by the Burmese military. There, they lived a very primitive life in Kermeni Refugee Camp 1, with no running water, no electricity, and inadequate supplies of food. You were looking at Section 13, where Ume was born and lived for nine years. Bure, father of Ume, a GIHS student, is one of those who fled into Thailand. มาบ่าเทมินะมิจาพะลอปะชาละกะเยตาติน
bị tự cho khi mà uống hiền bị sơ la ca mà uống hiền méo nữa nó đã bị đau cổ đi à bị bơ cú đã cho nó bị kẹt thì bị kẹt bơ cú đã cho nó bị kẹt thì đứa thay lại bị thiếu bơ thay lại chưa chi nè là đứa mà đi u s a là kêu cả mình cho nó bị co cả mình cho nó bị hù bị a u s d ra ra Dai kapi huri kelepe tato dai kapi wa mana to puma ka tenda to puma ka daga ki siya mi kana dai yue es es a na hibu hita dana na yade yue es a na kloka mi chala kapi kapi ma hibu hita dana na na mi chala bi es es chelo to a mi back in thailand there were there was not like doctor there was not even nurses to help treat the patients even one of my relatives like she one of my relatives died because there was not enough in, enough nurses to care for him so he died because of that life in currently refugee camp was hard because it was hard to find a food like we had to since we did not have money to afford food in a store there was a store but since we did not have the money to to like to go buy the food we had to go to the jungle or the forest to go and find foods like cucumber and the bananas and like uh, veggies vegetables ตัวเป็นยังเฮลุเนี่ยนะมาเป็นคนมีชั่วอยู่อีสานก็อยู่อีสานมีชั่วก็เป็นละเป็นป้อมย่าเราเปล่าอีกแบบอยู่ก็เ
have learned so much about life from them. I, I think everybody's, we're all very similar. I don't think I'm an exception. I think if anybody was in a camp or aware of the statistics or met these families or met these children, they would absolutely start to spend more time d doing more. The movie Rambo 4 is about the plight of the Karen people. So the idea was to seek out a place that would be the worst hellhole on the planet, the worst offender of human rights, abuses, wholesale slaughter, ongoing genocidal war, and we found that place to be considered by many, including the United Nations, as Burma. Burma is a beautiful country, and I grew up there, and I, I have friends from all the ethnic groups. It was an idyllic lifestyle. In 1949, Burma became independent from Britain. The new people that came in didn't have the same vision, and so that was the beginning of the Civil War. Mawa, mother of Mu Ki, a WCHS student, is one of those who escaped. Um, I used to say that I was born in Burma, and then I live in Thailand, and I went to live in a refugee camp. I know five different types of languages there. I know Korean, full Korean, Burmese, Thai, and now I learn English. I missed it. And the places is not even good. Like at school, we don't have like a good school place. It's like oh like when it rains, so muddy, so dirty. Even before we got to on the airplane or the airport, we had to ride buses. And they said to not throw up, and I was the only one that threw up. <laughs> I remember that clearly. We were on the airplane. I don't even know how to use the bathroom. <laughs> not on the airplane. <laughs> like, you can close it, but, like, you don't know how to lock it or so. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> And then um, I also throw up on the airplane. I was dizzy. All I did was sleep. In Northwest Burma, we find the Chin State. Within it are numerous groups and about 65 different languages. Many of these groups are represented at WCHS and GIHS. For various reasons, most of which are religious, they have been mistreated and many, in search of freedom, have taken a dangerous journey through Burma and then illegally cut through Thailand in order to reach Malaysia. This trip is difficult, requiring migrants to remain hidden for sometimes weeks with little food or water, travel by foot through jungles with wild animals and rough terrain, and be crammed into overcrowded boats and vehicles in order to reach Malaysia. Once in Malaysia, life can remain difficult, being unwanted by the people there, and many then migrate to other nations, including America. Our featured Chen family is Zomi. Well, we were in Burma, we, we 
a big family as you see you know and life is really hard that's why we my dad called us to come to Malaysia Hey con ama con thì lo na pen a a thui na nambat khada a biak na vai to mo hong ke bol sia nambat ni na mi nam vai chi dan ning ning to hi na to pana ko ngam pana a pu suak khe khi ko tong pa ni na ไทยเงามาเคตอไปหนาอมมอตอตอไปหนาอมมอตอตอหงไปมอตออีฟอร์ใบฟอร์เตสุงอัมเฮียงซอมถุงบางหงตวงสักินอชัวปอชัวปีหน้าไอ้มักอชัวปอชัวปีหน้าหงตวงสักFor the fish, yeah. you know, food for the world in the Thailand. Like, yeah. He said, like that, and we're so scared, he, and we just like, all cry. He said, if you talk on the way, and if the police catch us, you will be like the meat for animal. All over Malaysia, troops began their campaign to round up and expel illegal immigrants. The start of the operation marked the end of January deadline for all immigrants to register legally. When you saw the police, you have to go high. So sometimes, like we have to, like turn off all the light and pretend like we are sleeping, so that they don't like they don't know like people inside the house and they don't see us. They are also planning to carry out raids on rural plantation estates. Illegal immigrants face summary expulsion, whilst their employees. Life in Malaysia, it was really hard. Cause you know, uh, since we are illegal and refugee, they know that they know like. We cannot do anything to them, so like the citizens there, they bully us, and you know, yeah. <laughs> when we, we we cannot even like go out at night because we are so scared of them, and like they rap people like guard, and <laughs> their body never found again. When I get to USA, I thought like, wow, I'm in heaven. <laughs> like I don't have to suffer like the thing I've been suffering in the past anymore. So I was like, so happy. Guatemala is a beautiful country just south of Mexico. However, drug cartels and crime have become very serious problems in recent years. The danger became so real that one of our featured family was kidnapped and nearly killed before he escaped dramatically. This caused the family to seek refuge in America. Lorenza Pedro Diego, mother of Jose Vicente Pedro, a GIHS student, came to the U.S. first, followed by her family. In Guatemala, no tenemos casa, no tenemos dinero. In my country, it's so hard and difficult for many people, millions of people. It's so hard for them. They, you don't have a house. There's so many buying. Many people get killed by cartels, by bad people. 
and you don't have money there, you, like, you don't have land, and, like, you don't have nothing in my country. It's so sad and difficult in there. Mexican police have arrested one of the country's most wanted drug lords. Jose Antonio Acosta Hernandez is said to have confessed to ordering the murders of no fewer than 1,500 people. And it's a violence that is spreading beyond Mexico's borders as the drugs cartels traffic their contraband through neighboring Guatemala en route to the United States. I went to school, but I only get to third grade. But the teachers there, they don't teach very well and they don't have like the same thing in USA. I didn't learn anything. I didn't know how to write, read. Me gusta vivir aquí en Estados Unidos porque más mejor aquí en ya en Guatemala. Por eso que estoy aquí en Estados Unidos. When I came here is it's it's it changed everything. It changed everything for me because I go I go to school when I came here I go to school and learn Spanish and English because when I was in my country, I didn't know Spanish. I didn't know Spanish and English. I didn't know anything. Yugoslavia was once a proud nation and even hosted the 1984 Winter Olympics. Eventually, it split into several countries, including Bosnia, and war erupted in the early 1990s. Many Bosnian students at WCHS are children of those who migrated here after experiencing war firsthand. Armina Trstenjak is one of those parents. So to explain Yugoslavia briefly, there were six republics. There were the wealthy Catholic Republics of Slovenia and Croatia who sought closer relations with Europe, the poorer Orthodox Republic of Macedonia, the Central Orthodox Republics of Montenegro and Serbia, and the Muslim Republic of Bosnia. Plus, Serbia had two autonomous regions, Vojvodina and Kosovo. However, Kosovo was largely inhabited by Muslim Albanians, Croatia had a large Serb population, and Bosnia had a large population of Serbs and Croats. So, calls for greater autonomy grew louder throughout the 1980s and unrest soon followed, particularly in Kosovo where the Serbs felt persecuted by the Albanian majority. I was a kid. That time is like bad movie. That time I still did not realize what's really going You know, something's going on, it's scary. But like you kid, you don't put in yourself, you know, what really is going on? We did not have electric, no food, no water. They stopped everything. Nothing could come in because kind of everyone around our city is a war. My cousin died. He is uh, the. They shot him. He was killed. He's 21 years old. He proposed that morning to his girlfriend, and he said, "When I back, we go, got to married." And that night he go, he never come back. Why you have to be religion to separate people? I never understand that. Because in my house we celebrate Christmas, everything. Because my aunt more some of them married to Serbian, my cousin married to Serbian. And we celebrate the holidays, our holidays. We apply for America. Apply paper, we apply, we go to the interview and everything. And we came here. They approve us. My husband started working in Walmart. He learned English so fast. 
I tried to talk to her, but I was so mad because I understand what she's saying. But I don't know how to talk to her back. And I told her, please help me. I talk to you, I see something wrong, you help me. You say how I need it. And then we became very good friends. Debout Congolais, unis par le sang, unis dans l'effort pour l'indépendance. Many African nations are represented at WCHS and GIHS. Our featured family comes from the Democratic Republic of the Congo by way of the Nyaragosu refugee camp in Tanzania. The parents, at age 10, narrowly escaped death in Congo and were separated from their parents, who they have never seen again, eventually settling in to the camp in Tanzania. After years of filling out paperwork and trying to migrate to America, the family finally made it and the brothers are here with us now. Yeah, my name is Munga Ramadani. I am from Democratic Republic of Congo. Uh, I moved to Congo when I was 11 years old because of war. So when the war started in my country, people was running as a group in the forest. And I just didn't know where is my family was because the war started, everybody go to the different uh, way. Life in the refugee camp wasn't as good as it is here. Here you got more privileges than you do in a refugee camp. Before we came here, they had they made my parents like build house out of, like out of mud. Mud. Yeah. They didn't build it for us. We had to go there and build it for ourselves. School wasn't that much. It was like a small house. Yeah, just more a small than uh, two, uh, about 100 people in there. Anyway, no air condition. Just all packed. No people. food. Life is hard because we receive food a little bit for one month, so, but you eat it too. You, the food you receive for one month, you consume that food for two weeks. So after two weeks, it's easier. We're gonna send your case to American Immigration. If they approve it, you're gonna send you later to show if you approved or you failed. Everybody, they wait on that day because in review a lot of people, maybe 6,000 people. We wait, people fail and they cry. People kill themselves. The day fell, you take a knife and die. Because I do have nothing. I stayed in refugee camp 20 years. This was my last chance. We get the letter said that we, you passed. My wife was crying, my kids, like girlfriend, because it's all this, he was, hey, we passed, we passed. When they told us the date before we came here, we had to go get shots, drink meds, and then when the time come, we packed all our stuff, just the clothes we need. They had those uh, charter buses waiting for us. They called our names. And when they called your name, you get on the bus. You sit down, and when everybody's called, well, when you get on the bus, you show your ID and stuff, and all the paper, your paperwork. You get on the bus, and then they take you to the airport. You get food, what is this? <laughs> we are hungry, but I never eat this food. I got stuck in the bathroom, so I started knocking so someone can open the door. They had those ladies who come in uh, the aisles come to open the door for me. When we got here, we, we had those still people here that came here before us that we knew. So they helped us uh, get situated.
الجلال والجمال والسناء والبهاء Iraq is located in the Middle East. War has been a reality in this region for a long time. Malak Salman, a WCHS student who eventually moved to Dubai, was in the capital of Baghdad and remembers it well. My name is Malak Salman. I graduated from War Central in 2017 and I am from Iraq. Yes, I am Middle Eastern. The Middle East is a region at the crossroads of Europe, Asia, and Africa. It has no strict definition, but usually includes Egypt, Turkey, Iran, Syria, Iraq, Israel, Palestine, Lebanon, Jordan, Saudi Arabia, Yemen, Oman, United Arab Emirates, Qatar, Bahrain, and Kuwait. Afghanistan and Cyprus are sometimes included in the definition. I was in Baghdad, and the, the picture will never disappear from my mind. When I was three years old, I was sitting in the balcony with my uh, cousin, we were only three, we're close in age. And imagine you're only three years old and you just see tank and bombing and dead bodies. I can't forget that image. Right, I'm fit and ready to go and work with children. <laughs> Incredible, but true. Three British clowns have turned up in the mad circus that Baghdad has become. Their aim is simple, to help children traumatized by war. Then I moved to Dubai with my parents. They actually left me in Iraq for like a year, and then I moved to Dubai when I was three. Forty years ago, most of this was desert. Now there's a glittering metropolis, the fastest growing desert city on the planet, Dubai. When I first came here, none of this existed. It was one huge big desert. The city's most visible techno marvel is the Burj Khalifa. Half a mile high, almost twice as tall as the Empire State Building. It's the tallest skyscraper in the world. I love Dubai. It's, it's a fun place. Not to live in, it's really expensive. But, you know, just to have fun. Activity. Up to 35,000 people can live and work in this gigantic greenhouse. When I was like 12, I moved to the U.S. And specific, specifically, I was in the northern state of Massachusetts. And I have no idea what English is. The teacher would tell me what are my classes are, and I don't know what she's talking about. I don't even know if it's a school. I think what is most astounding is the fact that kids from all over the world are here, you know. Um, so all sorts of languages, all religions, all cultural beliefs and views of the world, and they're here, and they're here for a singular purpose, and, that, and they're very focused on that purpose, and that is to achieve, do well. Uh, many of them want to graduate from high school and then move on with their lives and, and have a great, uh, great life. They want to make money, be good citizens, and so on. The hardest thing about coming to America was the culture changing. I'm not trying to change my Arab culture or my American culture. I'll just love both of them. We, we still scared of the police when we see the police. Oh, yeah, we hide. We hide. And, 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 <laughs> you know, for me and my friend, they say, no, the police is going to help you, not, uh, not make you scared, you know? Yeah. They are good people. So, like, whenever I see police, I'm like, hi. <laughs> I was in second grade and I didn't know English. Well, I know ABCD and then they had us write ABCD and all that. B, C, D, E, F, G, la, 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 la. 
H I J K L M N la 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 la. I had no friend at first because I couldn't speak English, and then I couldn't. If I couldn't speak English, then I couldn't communicate with the other people. So it was hard, and and. I feel like sometimes I was be like outcast. Be, I feel like I was being outcast, but I was not because I was afraid of my like English. I just wonder if it, is this the English that I learned or not. Want to go to school? The food is a problem for us. You know, we we never eat before. So we'll, what is this? It's like animal food, like. Tomato, they don't even I know. cook. And broccoli, <laughs> they don't even cook. Uh, I was like, like, oh, I can't eat this. Yeah, like in my culture, we 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 don't eat food uh, that are not cooked, like well cooked. So yeah. <laughs> in the cafeteria, I saw a lot of food that are not cooked, and I was like, what? We have to cook by ourselves or what? And I saw like the, <laughs> the American people like eating like without uh, being cooked. So I was like. Wow, how can they eat that? Are they animal or what? <laughs> and I like after like one year, I like that. I like the food and everything. <laughs> My wife, she never used the stove. She don't know how to turn on. She don't know nothing. I don't know too. The cook is this your phone? You left. She left. She said, "Why? What she doing this?" We are hungry, we need to eat, and we are very tired. <laughs> Nobody can cook. The food, we, when we came here, we didn't eat much Af American food. We ate African food. My mom knew how to cook it, and we had some people uh, show us some stores that, that sold African food, and we bought it. But the first time we ate American food, oh, it was a mess. We did not even know how to eat it. <laughs> <laughs> On the first day of school, <laughs> don't, 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 don't even My start sister was like, she's uh, so easily emotional, you know. She was crying, crying. <laughs> On the cl class, we don't know, like, we are lost, but I know. Out, but, you know, she was crying, and I said, don't cry, people are going to laugh at me, don't cry. And just go, I don't I've got no friend. <laughs> and I said, why do you guys have a dog in your house? I said, and back where we come from, we don't even sit close to our, our dogs. I have friends from other different parts of the world as well, and they also have stories just like what I have. And it was really unique like to share each other's stories and all that, and to become friends, and yeah, to know the struggle, what we have for each other. And here in America, having a school with um, females and males together is totally accepted, but it's not accepted in the Middle East. So it's just accepting both of these cultures is difficult. It's just so difficult. You just feel like, hold on, I didn't learn this. Hold on, what, what's happening? I am perfect just like you In every way, yes it's true I'm perfect just like you Whatever you say or do Breaking the law, man. That's supposed to be uglier than a principal. <laughs> oh. Our community does not get it. Our community does, does not understand that in this place we reflect the foundations of successful humanity. We have that right here. And uh, it's just, it's a remarkable thing that, that we all get to witness every day. It's uh, fascinating and uh, very rewarding.
I've seen Christians, I've seen Muslims, I've seen uh, white, I've seen black, I've seen uh, Hispanics. It, people from all walks of life come together much more now and are accepting of each other much more than they were 30 years ago. Um, it, it, it's funny to say that, you know, basically um, 33 years ago we had two ethnic groups, white and black, and now we have many and we're so much more accepted. We have 23 different countries represented and over 28 different languages. So, you know, one of the things that we thought about, how will we make this one big family? We really talk about respect, about treating others how you would want to be treated. In the world that we live in, we tell them that this is a family. And some people outside of this family may not treat you the way that you want to be treated. But inside this family, we're going to treat each other with total respect. What is the second thing that we always talk about? Comzy. Getting along with others. Make sure that you respect your peers, just like we want you to respect yourselves. Those two characteristics will make sure that you are successful in school and in life. Attendance and getting along with others. Geo International School is a great thing to go to school in Geo. Because we, and many people from other countries, they come together. They meet together like a family. Su escuela de ellos sí está bien porque ellos estudia y ellos está aprendiendo inglés, está aprendiendo todo. Ellos está bien allá en, en la escuela de ellos. And I was determined to get all A's so that so that my parents can be proud of me. And then during that year, I got like perfect attendance from that year until now. I still got perfect attendance. <laughs> And now I'm at GO International High School and I love it there because there are a lot, like a lot of students from different countries that comes together and we get along pretty well and, and like in, in that school we, we did not judge one another because each person has like each person has their own talents. My school, HS, <laughs> Geo, it helped me a lot. The best school, yeah, the best school ever. All the teachers. And we have two groups, right? <laughs> Are these groups plural or singular? Plural. 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 Right? Yeah. What about them? Are they plural or singular? We have students from like I think 26 country and. All the people are like getting along and like you never have to worry about like you know being racist or whatever like uh, you might be treated a uh, different way than others. You never have to worry about uh, it because like all the people come along and get together and you know no more discrimination. Part of this group. Now am I part of that group? No. Am I over there? No. No, no I'm in this group, right? I'm not in this group, so we would...
Aaliyah Kopis and DJ Tyner weren't born in a foreign country. Neither were their parents. They are traditional students born in the USA. So at Warren Central with so many students, whenever I go out into the community, when I graduate and go to college and have a job, no one from Warren Central will ever receive a culture shock. From the very beginning, we've all been so diverse and learned from many different cultures. We can all get together, and so none of us will ever be surprised or not know how to work with anyone else. All right. So for the second one, for Z, put 5. Right. 5 minus 4 for X okay. plus absolute value. 4 plus 5. You see students come in who don't speak any English, not one word of English, and you see them doing the same work that you're doing, and it lets you realize how blessed you are. And my perspective, more than anything, is from seeing them, what they went through, and how they overcome and perform just as well as I do academically, it makes me feel very blessed to be given everything that I have in my life. Yeah, it doesn't really matter what race you are. It's like we're all the same, and we all, we all do the same thing. Every day, we all put our socks on the same, we all put our clothes on the mm -hmm. same. And I feel like we should, we should, we're all equal. So now my, you know, my girls have graduated from Warren Central High School, and I think there's over like 30 different languages there. So, you know, going from elementary school from 18 languages to high school, it's just amazing, you know, what, what these kids that, that they have been around have been through. I mean, I don't think anybody has any idea. And I think it's amazing that Warren Central has brought all of these children together and you just don't hear of any problems at all. So, I mean, it, it makes me proud that my kids went to Warren Central. Uh, Warren Central, I, I think, is, uh, I'd say, the frontier as far as this diversity goes with uh, all the different students and the, their languages and what, whatnot. Uh, they're going to they're gonna start setting the bar and everybody's going to have to fall in place. And we became a little bit more of a diversified school and throughout the years. Uh, we started to have um, students from every walk of life, every, every background, every religion, every, uh, many, many countries. War Central High School has its own world. There's a lot of diversity and many nationalities all in the same, in the same cla uh, class. Uh, one class has different religions, different uh, countries. You can learn everything about every single country just in one class. So whenever I was sitting in a class at this building, um, I just, I just, I'm just living in my own world. There's just this peace that you feel. You feel like love is everywhere. When I go outside, I just don't want to hear it because there's, there's just a little bit of hate that you feel when you're outside. But here, here's like your own home, your own place with all your friends. There's, there's no rules about your race. There's no, we don't believe in stereotypes. I like uh, Central Battle. Like, he has a lot of welcome people and different varieties of people, like different yeah. colors and everybody from different places. When I came here, the, the first thing they, they did was like greet me and say hello and show me a place, uh, place where I can go, like a cafeteria where you can sit, and a library where you can get books, and books that you, you can, like my level. It was a really great thing to see like everybody getting along, different cultures, speak different languages, and to help each other out. I have no idea what they're talking about. I'm just, I have a piece of paper in front of me and I'm just, writing something in Arabic or just drawing. I'm just not paying any attention. But there's this one girl and her name is Hannah in my health class and she, and that was in middle school, and she was just the smartest. Any question, everyone would look at her and be like, Hannah, answer. Those activities that the teacher had with the two groups and Hannah was in that group, that group will, be, will definitely be winning. So I just wanted to be something like Hannah. Okay, um, well, when I received the call um, from the person at Thompson School District saying that someone wanted to contact me, I was a little confused, and then I gave you a call, Bob, and um, when you told me what an impact I had on the loss without 
me even knowing, I was really touched. Um, I I was actually quite honored to know that someone kind of looked up to me, um, even if I didn't really know them or remember them. Um, it was it was a big deal to me, and it felt it felt really good. So I'm glad that you guys reached out to me and that I I got to talk to you, Malak, and talk to you, Bob, about um, how much I helped you without even knowing. Thank you for being there in that class, uh, for showing me how good you are and uh, making me want to be better. Um, thank you for talking to me on uh, how to be a better student. Uh, yeah, just thank you, Hannah. I know it's not enough. I think it's not enough, but like you really changed my life, and thank you so much. So I started working harder. I started learning English, and I started paying attention to all of my classes, staying after, staying after school in school just to finish work. That's something that my parents were like, what? You're staying in school to finish schoolwork? I'm like, yes. Not all of schools are like the one that's here. This one is basically just on, on its own level. You got kids from all different variety, different walks of life that have experienced things that other kids have not. And they just come together and just share that and share their culture. The, it, the, the people here, don't, don't, they don't care who, who someone is. They just befriend them, become friends with them. They just talk to them. And show them that uh, show them that you don't have to be scared. You don't have to be alone. We can all, we're all friends here. Uh, it's I don't get it. Like I don't get it. You just flip this one, the same. And then over five over top and four over down. Oh, so that's it. Yeah. Oh, okay. What about this one? So if it's the same. Okay. So all the problems here, you just flip. Mm-hmm. All right. What did you do? Here? I got there were great teachers. I had a lot of great teachers that I'm really thankful for. I learned a lot. More than like elementary school or middle school. I learned a lot in high school. 68 minus 32. Anybody else want to answer this besides stealing? Alright. Tell them what it is. membership. Ladies, did y'all hear? Alright, go ahead. D. Well, the Say. denial of church membership and, it, and its promises. The denial of church membership and its promises. I think everyone could learn from Warren Central, and there should be more places like Warren Central everywhere. The schools that are called preppy and have all white students, that's not what we want, that's not what we strive for in America. America is for many, we are one. Everyone comes together, everyone works together, and everyone has equal opportunity. If, if everybody would step back and watch how well they have done, Everybody else should be able to do the same thing, you know. Uh, uh, that's that's a good stepping stool just to see how well Central has done, especially in the last several years. Uh, the kids, I've visited there many times. I've never seen a problem out of those kids. From many, we are one. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Let's say that the same time. One, two, three. From many, we are one. From many, we are one. <laughs> For many, we are one. For many, we are one. You know? For many, we are one. I want to say is uh, thank you for um, for uh, uh, letting us in, just be, uh, uh, coming to us with open arms, and I thank you for that because some of us don't know, uh, never had this kind of life, and we never thought that we wouldn't have any friends here. But you guys show uh, said show us that. It doesn't matter who you are and where you came from and what kind of color you are, everybody here is a friend and we'll come to you with open arms. A good example of being one at our schools is the WCHS 2017 boys soccer team. Team members have come from virtually every corner of the world with different religions, cultures, colors, and languages that could have separated them. They instead came together as one and defeated numerous region champions as well as the 2014 and 2016 Kentucky state champions. Out of over 300 schools represented, they made it to the state semifinals, having only lost one match all season. To make this season what it was, it had, not, had everything to do with the bond they shared with each other. Um, I think a lot of the times the, the guys look at each other as more family members than just teammates. Once they began sharing each other's culture, um, talking about Hispanic guys were going to our Asian friends' houses to eat meals and um, 
even the, the rest of the team were going to our African friends' house to share meals. And once we started doing that, it created a, a bond that I think is going to take them, you know, beyond the field. Then you have uh, Leonce Kamano. Kamano. I know yeah. the the end is silent. Di, di, di Kamana. Uh, yeah, I'd say it's uh, Dukamana. Dukamana. I think that's right. Okay. Uh -huh. And then you got uh, Farudin Alic, okay. who we already talked about the big score. Yep. And uh, then the last one, coach number seventeen, Sinid Avdic. Okay. Obditch. Yeah. Obditch. Okay. Yep. Gotcha. Yep. So those are your starters, folks. And, yep. and as Coach already said, we apologize to uh, any of you uh, Warren Central uh, fans that uh, if we don't get the names exactly right. But uh, there are, how many did you say nationalities on 12, this? Twelve. Twelve different, different nationalities yep. on this uh, Warren Central team. So. Uh, I think the most brilliant part about our uh, team and starting lineup is we had people from all different um places in the world. Uh, we had three guys from Africa. We had uh, two guys from uh, Eastern Europe, um, four Asian kids, and uh, I believe we have one kid from Central America. 12 nationalities. 12 nationalities, yeah. Involved here for Warren Central. Yeah, and that's the other thing too. You know, when I talked to Coach Ray, uh, he was, uh, we were discussing how they've gotten to this point. Being on this field and being able to go undefeated on this field was a huge accomplishment for the boys. Um, they, they put everything in it that they could. I think these kids definitely showed, I guess us as adults, that man, we're amazing. The human race is amazing. And to, to be able to accomplish what they accomplished against so many different odds is really just beauty, beautiful and it's, it's love. I would invite anybody in our community, in our state or nation, to come and take a look at us and, and see how this is done because this is a, this is a small part of the world here and uh, proud to be a part of it. I want to say, I, w I wish I had a way to pick this school up, this body of people, and show to the world and say, don't, don't tell me that we have to be mean to each other, that we have to fight each other, that we have to kill and rape and steal from each other. Don't tell me that. Because I live in a world, a little microcosm, day in and day out, where we have the diversity that we have and people can be as good to each other as they choose to be. And if you're just a teenager who's going to come to Bowling Green and live here and you want to know what high school you should go to, you should definitely come to Central. Not just because we're only, we're only one, but also we get, we're going to have a lot of events. We're going to have a lot. I promise you, our principal is going to stand down there doing his barbecue and giving you the food, and he's happy. because without them it wouldn't be the same. We'd be like every other school and we wouldn't have a story to tell. And with the teachers working with students to teach them English, to teach them about America's culture, to let them embrace theirs and not try to change them whenever they come, i just like to say thank you for the partnership that Warren Central has because it's changed me and it's made me realize how blessed I am and it's going to make me a better person in the future to be able to know how to work with any person from anywhere. Especially, um, I'm from like a war-torn country and it's really important to be nice to each other and understand each other and just hear each other's stories. What matters is what are you willing to give to make this world a better world? We are all humans and that each of us has uh, different stories in our lives and if we get along with one another then we, then we will have a better life and a better society for the future. It doesn't matter where you come from. It doesn't matter if you, what religion you are, uh, who, what, what race you are, like if you are black, 
white, Hispanic, Asian. It doesn't matter. I feel like um, if, if Foreign Central can do it, then uh, I feel like the world can do it. I feel like there's no need to uh, have hatred against each other. I feel like if Foreign Central can get along with how diverse we are and um, all the different races and stuff we have, I feel like anybody can do it because we are one from anywhere we one. I think with the community and 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 uh, the region and even the country can learn from looking at a school like Warren Central is that it doesn't take a whole lot of work to get along. It just takes a little bit of compassion and a little bit of understanding. Somebody tell them, oh, you are from, from there, or you that religion, you cannot finish school, you cannot be what you want. That should not be a problem. They should be treat everybody equal. Doesn't matter color, doesn't matter re religion. What I want to say to the world about getting along is that GEO International has multiple cultures, multiple languages under one roof. And we are very confined. And we can make it work, so can the world. In the world's eye, we have probably one of the, the number one reasons for people not to get along. We have over 30 different languages represented in this school. Uh, many different faiths, many different beliefs. Uh, lots of complex realities when you start um, putting lots of different kinds of people in an isolated place or a concentrated place like a school. And the unique thing about Warren Central High School to me and its people uh, is the fact that we do get along so well with each other. Our kids seem to be more accepting of each other. If it's not as good as you want it, then stop crying about it and go realize the things that make us good and do those things. And uh, this school, Warren Central High School at 559 Morgantown Road, they do that in an incredibly effective way. And I'm so proud of them. I mean, I'm just, I'm proud of the adults, I'm proud of the kids uh, for doing one of the world's most complicated uh, things, and that is to uh, work with each other and get along with each other to the degree that we do. For many, we are one. For many, we are one. Me and Alon, one gentleman. For many, we are one. For many, we are one. Me and Alon, one gentleman. For many, we are one. Me and Alon, For many, we are one. For many, we are one. For many, we are one. Huh? For many, we are one. For many, we are one. Come la, go la de, get a hongo, kuku kongo, ekwe esa, luza go la de. For many, we are one. 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 From many we are one.
From many, we are one. From many, we are one. From many, we are one. For many, we are one. <laughs> من كل مكان احنا واحد Please keep on saying, Luke. That's cute. Wow, I'm excited. So many weird what? So after all of this, here's what I would want you to know and what I, I would want the world to know about us. From many, 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 <laughs> we are one at Warren Central High School. Once a dragon, always a dragon. I was born in, oh, is it on? But Leah beat probably 40 grown men in a quail unlimited bird hunt. Uh, and she beat me, I got second, she got first. But one thing that we can do is make sure that everyone takes their part in society and does as well as they, that was awful. Cut, cut, <laughs> cut. Welcome to our favorite school, A. Miss Mosquito. A lot of step. Uh, first, uh, we leave, oh my gosh. <laughs> Can we start over? No. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> Let's start over. DJ's family will do it like take out the dog and walk it. We'll go outside, go up and find it. We saw it. The government will never go. <laughs> he was scared <laughs> he of the dog. ran and went inside and locked the door. And we have so many, so many walks of life that um, <laughs> Mr. Stevenson. And yeah. the dogs. Why do you guys have <laughs> dogs in the house? <laughs> Go for it. My name is Adam Hatcher and I'm the ass oh. okay. How do you live with, uh, in the same place? Dog. <laughs> 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 Part of your family and you feed it. <laughs> Take a hand and go like this and feed it. Aaliyah Kopis wasn't born in a foreign country. Neither were her parents. She is, tra she is a traditional student. Do it again. Yeah. I don't, I can talk, I swear. Okay. Aaliyah Kopis wasn't born in a foreign country. Neither were her parents. She is, she is a traditional student born in the USA. Try again. <laughs> Aaliyah Kopis wasn't born in a foreign country. Neither were her parents. She is a traditional student born in the USA. We don't always have to agree that there's a right way to do it. Always tell the students that we can communicate, not confrontate. Is confrontate a word? Okay. Number two. Que ye la pli. He is a loop. Que ye la pli. He is a loop. Good job. I'm from many, we are one. Oh, come on. You could do better than that. No, I thought it was good. From many, we are one. From many, we are one. Okay, come on. Come on. 
In understanding how their the life was, that's a really amazing thing. <laughs> That means Zip it. Yes. I am perfect just like you. In every way, yes, it's true. I'm perfect just like you. Whatever you say or do.